Hello and welcome to the video about the organizing canvas model. I guess you came to this video because you saw the website story.wobblies.org where we explained three IWW campaigns and try to analyze it with the organizing canvas model. The organizing canvas model is basically like a tool for organizing um, written from fellow workers on the shop floor for other fellow workers in the, on the shop floor and you can basically use it for struggles at the workplace, for feminist struggles, for solidarity networks, for climate change, and also for refugee struggles. The idea is to help you to ask all the questions that will come up during an organizing drive, um, to be prepared for things that will come. You'll find further information under the video or on our website. Before we start, I'd like to give you some uh, a short introduction and a few notes um, before filling out the canvas model. The first one is, please see the model as like a preliminary status. So um, you fill, fill it out with your colleagues and only with your colleagues, not, not uh, alone in your room, but do it in a discussion with your colleagues and always have to take a look at it again and perhaps change it and so on and so forth. The idea is to help you to ask the right questions. If you want to compare it to some leftist idea in the history, it basically you can say it is like a worker's inquiry, just as the, the operaists and also Marx used it, but in a modern form that would what we would say. Also be aware, that is the second point, the model is more comprehensible for workers with experience of struggles. So basically if you start a new one from scratch and you haven't done that before, it might, might seem a bit odd or a bit crazy if you fill out this form, but as you will continue, you will, I'm pretty sure you will see that um, it might be helpful. Some further information you'll find on story.wobblystock.org slash en and wobblystock.org slash en. If you can't read my handwriting, that's totally fine. You hear that a lot, but you will find all the information in the notes under the video. Let's take a look and start. Basically, I'd like to show you a fictional model, which is also influenced by my work as a social worker. And I try to explain it in a way so that also people who are not working on social work can take a look and get inspired. As you can see here on the top, I designed it for social work. Here that's my name. Here you can see the date and the number of, of the model. And I'll start here with the constituents, which is the primary constituents where your model is based on. In this case, it is the workers on the shop floor. And the opponents is firstly the boss in the company and also the local government. And that is the case because the company, I assume we work in here, becomes a lot of money from the local government. And basically the boss always will say, well, I can't pay you more. Or I can't give you the resources because the local government doesn't give me any more. And so there's always the struggle between these two parts. The top three problems here are too much administration. So basically it means a lot of work that has to be done or a lot of time I spend uh, in my work is to document things and fill out papers and so on. So basically it's a lot of administration and also my colleagues feel that this is the case. That is the first one. Then I'm not sure if I wrote that down correct, but it is uh, we don't have so much time for the work with our clients. So it's basically all this problem that if we, if we want to have more time with our clients, there's always this problem that we can't do it. And also money is an issue. It is not the highest one, but still it is always nice to have more money. Here's a big connection between the problems and also the techniques of division, which in that at this point means which social techniques does my employer use to, to put pressure on the colleagues and also to, uh, to make a division between the workers. And in this case here, the example is the so-called quality management, which is basically, if you compare to like the uh, things that Henry Ford did in the big factories to say, 
for all all step you make you just have so much time and then if uh, if you need longer then that's always your problem so it's like a very small and the other issue um, that they often use is pressure on individual workers to say hey colleague x or colleague colleague y you did this and that and we are very unhappy with you and you can't do it um, anymore like that and so on Okay, so the benefits of membership. So what get your colleagues out of out of the, our organizing drive that we try to try to build? First one is solidarity amongst workers. For example, if stressed by a boss, then you can always talk to your colleagues and take a look if uh, we can do something together. That's the first one. Then the strengthening of bargaining power. Yeah, basically that means if you do it like collectively, you're always stronger. And that also uh, is the case then for individual, uh, for individual struggles or individual um, things that you want to enforce in your company. And the third one is the overcome individualization. That means like in my job, I have a lot of time um, I'm working on my own and it is very necessary for me or it is very very good for me if I talk to my colleagues and see hey are you doing it the same and are you always are you also stressed are you also angry and so on and so forth the unique value proposition I think or I feel that uh, sounds a lot like uh, if you are in a public relations agent <laughs> but um, in this case for the IWW it is an injury to one is an injury to all which is a short claim that might be also good for your colleagues. These strategies, um, that is mainly the thing where to focus and um, how to win. The first one here in the example is direct action on the shop floor. So everything we can do on our own. If we are pissed at, at our bosses, then we will talk to each other and see what can we enforce. Then in the other thing in this example here is the coordination within teams of the department. So there are basically like 50 people in the department that I'm thinking of here. They're basically like coordinations or people or like delegates. It might be good to talk to if, if we do a coordination of an action. The third one is the action in relation to another union. Um, there's also a big mainstream union which is called Verdi in the um, on the shop floor and it is always good to take a look what they are doing and sometimes you can work with them and sometimes you can't. It makes more sense in workplaces where there's already a union, in this case this. Okay, so here the competitive advantage. You, you also have to keep that in mind because if you are successful in some way or another, there will always come another union or another I don't know, like another party and so on, and always tries to tries to get you. And in this case, the idea is to think about the advantages that you have and that no one else can do. And in this case here, um, the social leaders on our side, then they are young people with energy and not so many old people who are defeated. I'm not saying to be an old people is a bad thing. I'm just saying, that um, could could lead to a lot, of, a lot of experiences where you lost struggles. And if you have some young people, then sometimes that's, they're a bit more naive, but that could also be an advantage in some cases. And the third one here is political colors, because from experiences from other IWW campaigns, you can see that if there are people who are explicitly going into the shop within uh, as a political project, then sometimes they they do it with more, they get into more risks and that could be helpful if, if it is uh, used in a, in a good way. So the financing, that's basically to think about how much money you will probably need. And in this case here, it was a print material for about 50 euros a year, then a website for about 100 euros a year and solidarity funds for about 1000 euros a year. The next one are the key metrics, which is an idea to think about how do you measure success or what do you count as a success, uh, which can basically mean a lot of different things. But in this case here, I wrote down the numbers of committee members. 
um, also depending on where you work. So what is the representation? Are there more women or more men or more migrants and so on? The second one are the struggles one. So how successful were you? And the third one is IWW members. I know that is like a lot of, I'm not sure if it's always a problem, but there's a lot of talk about that because a lot of workers who are in struggles with you together not uh, automatically join the IWW, which you have to decide if that's okay for you or it's not. Just the thing to think about. The channels here down here, they are this idea to think about how much, uh, no, how do you contact your members? And in this case here, it is the mailing list, it is the phone and the web chat, which is our internal form of uh, like a group messenger, like Slack or like WhatsApp. Okay, the core capabilities. Um, the thing is, um, if you build a committee from the ground up and also not with staff um, that are paid for, there's this problem of you have to be good in a lot of things, but we assume here that it might be good to focus on three things that you are very good at, because keep in mind, you can't do everything. It's That's not possible. In this case here, it is the public relations, which is um, also experience from IWW campaigns from the past to say social media, for example, or also press re releases and so on and so forth. But then there is fast communication amongst workers. So if something happens on the shop floor, it might be good to have um, to communicate all the stuff that happens like within minutes so that you can help each other. So or the third thing is the worldwide solidarity, for, like for a phone blast or for an email blast, for example, so that colleagues write your boss an email. The membership and leadership structure. The thing here is to, it is not, or it might be good to think about like, how do we define a member? Like, for example, do you have to write down like a paper, like a formal membership, or is it just, yes, okay, I, I like you, I'm with you. Then also the thing, how are decisions made? In this case here, it is a two third majority on meetings and uh, it might be good to uh, take a look at the rule to say, meetings not longer than two hours. The core that we define as a membership is interested workers, but not the team leaders, as I mentioned before. And the how to work with each other is uh, basically the mailing list and also like a delegate system to say who's gonna write the invitation for next meeting and so on. We will now come to the last thing. The mechanism. From my experiences and also the experience in the, in the study we did, the mechanism is a thing that a lot of people not think about if they start, but it might be good to take a look. Like if you are successful, how do you secure the wins that you had? And in this case here, it is consciousness raising or amongst the workers, then the cooperation with the workers council or some form of bargaining agreements would might, which might be good this one or also how do we hold members so that they stay stay a member is a good form to make social events so that's it um that is the organizing canvas model if you like the canvas model and also this video please leave us some comments or write us an email to organizing at wobblies.org and take care bye